Allow me to spin you a yarn of gold. The story of Rumpled Stiltskin. Now this story, strange it may seem, starts with a miller talking to a king. The king had just ridden by and stopped to pick up some water for his horse. And the miller was talking to him and started to boast. Oh yes, my lord. I must say I have some very pretty girls in my family. <laughs> in fact, my youngest daughter is so clever, you won't believe this, but she can actually weave straw into gold. <laughs> I would be very rich man, but I don't like to brag. Um, your daughter can turn straw into gold. Well, <laughs> if she can do that, I'll make her my queen. <laughs> but if your daughter can't, then you would be lying to a king. And that is treason. And you and your daughter will die. Well, the miller was worried, for he had just told the biggest whopper of his life. And indeed, the king did take the young lady back to his palace. And that day he gave her a good meal and looked after her. But that night, he took her to one of the chambers where he ordered all the servants to fill the room with straw and a spinning wheel in the middle. Now listen, young lady, if you can spin all this straw into gold, I will make you queen and you will be the richest girl in the world. <laughs> but if you can't, you and your father will die. Fair sir. I cannot spin this straw into gold. It is impossible. Nobody, nobody, I promise you, can turn it into gold. Then you will die. And with that, he shut the door. So the poor young miller's daughter just sat in the corner and cried. And she cried a bit more and a bit more. Well, all of a sudden, she heard breathing in the corner of the room. But the door was locked. So who was in there? She turned round and saw a little man, well, more of a hobgoblin, standing there looking at her, just looking at her. And then he said, Young lady, why are you crying? No, he was as kind as he was mean. And although he couldn't bear to see her cry, he never did anything without a small reward. Go on, tell me why you're crying. Uh... Oh, there is no way you can help me. For I have to turn all this straw into gold. And I think it is something that cannot be done. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can help you. I could spin all this straw into gold. But I don't work for nothing. What's precious to you is precious to me. <laughs> what do you have for me, me, me? <laughs> the only thing I have any of any worth here is my mother's necklace with one old pearl. <laughs> she gave it to me a long time ago. But if you can turn this straw into gold, it is surely yours. Goblin grabbed it and giggled and laughed and put it into his little pocket. Then he jumped onto the spinning wheel and with a giggle and a hey nonny nonny wove the straw into the most beautiful golden weave. It was like a golden blanket, thin and fine, but definitely gold. That was the most riches that the miller's daughter ever saw. But she was so tired from worry and hunger that she just lied in the corner and fell asleep. The next morning, there was a locking, unlocking of the door. And the king stood there. Oh my goodness. You are truly the most cleverest girl I have ever seen. But he wasn't satisfied. Oh no, he was more greedy and he wanted more gold. 
because more gold meant more power, and the more power you had, power you had, the more powerful a king you are. So he fed the girl well, and looked after her all day. But on the second day, oh, he found a bigger chamber, and ordered his servants to find more straw. <laughs> And he locked her in that room as well. And again, the poor miller's daughter sat at the spinning wheel and cried. <laughs> what am I going to do? I only have this mere spinning wheel and I have to turn all this straw into gold. And there's no little hobgoblin here now, is there? <laughs> oh, poor sweet Miller's daughter. Is there anything else you have to give me? <laughs> and of course, there was the farmer's ring. But that was just useless, just a bit of copper, and he wasn't interested. <laughs> oh, I don't want that. I want something precious to you. Something precious, precious, precious. It must be precious to you. Oh, I know. When you are queen, I'll have your first baby. <laughs> Give me that, and then I will turn all this straw into gold. <laughs> what do you think? The miller's daughter thought. For giving up a baby is a very serious thing. But if she didn't do the straw, she would die anyway. And it might never happen. Well, of course. If you can turn all this straw into gold, you could have my first child. And with that, the hobgoblin jumped onto the spinning wheel and span and sewed the, for the night the most thinnest gold you've ever seen. And all the room was golden. They had gold on the floor, gold all over the ceilings. It was a really bright sight. And all the time, the beautiful miller's daughter slept in the corner. And the next day, there was an unlock into the door, and I'd opened it, and there was the king. Oh, you truly are a wonder. Sleep, young maiden, sleep, for I could want for no more gold than this. <laughs> I am the richest man in the world, and you have made me so. I think I've fallen in love with you. Tomorrow we shall be wed. <laughs> yes, wed. Servants, get the banquet hall ready. Get the bricker, get the priests. I'm going to be married. Well, he was handsome enough. And the miller's daughter thought, well, if I'm queen, I'm half in charge. I could help rule this country a little bit wiser, a little bit better than he's been doing. And so she married him. And she had many happy years with him, funnily enough. And they had a baby daughter. And all was going well. Until one day, the hobgoblin arrived, smiling and giggling. Hello, your majesty. <laughs> I'm here for what's rightfully mine. <laughs> your little precious one. Your little baby. <laughs> oh. The queen had forgotten about this. It had been a few years since he had helped her. And a promise is a promise. But she cried. And she cried. And the hobgoblin, as well as mean as as kind as he is, he's a mixture. All right, all right, stop crying, stop crying. Oh, oh let me think, let me think. Oh. <laughs> I'll make you another deal. A kind deal. If you can guess my name in three days. <laughs> if you can guess my name in three days. 
I will let you keep the baby. <laughs> Only three days, mind you. Only three days. And with that, he vanished. Oh, three days. Three days to find out his name, she said. Oh. Servants, servants, come quickly. All of you, all of you, cooks, maids, everybody, come here. I want you to find out as many names as you can. I don't care how ridiculous they sound. I don't care how smart or all posh they are. Go and find me all the names you can. Go to the libraries, get the books, everything. Bring them here. We only have three days. And all the servants went everywhere. They went to all the registrars. They went to all the libraries and bought the biggest books. They went round all the villages finding out different names. And they writ them down and brought them to the Queen. The next day, the Hobgoblin arrived. Hello, Your Majesty. Do you know my name? <laughs> Is it Stephen? No, no, that's not my name. Is it Michael? No, that's not my name. Would it be Jeremiah? No. Michael Watson? No. Brian? <laughs> no. Barry? Oh, no, no, no. Bill? No! Rupert? No, no, no. You've got it wrong. Stephaniah? Close. But no. <laughs> All day this went on, and the hobgoblin laughed and rejoiced in the fact that she didn't know his name. But then it got late. And he decided that was the end for that day, and he left. Oh, the Queen was very upset. Oh, what am I going to do? Servants! Here! Here! All those names didn't work. I need you to find the funny names, the ridiculous names, the names that would fit a thing that isn't really of this world. Off you go! 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 All of you! And off they went. And the next day, the Hobgoblin returned. <laughs> Queenie, do you know my name? <laughs> Crookback? No, no, no. Bow need? No. Freckled features? No. Yellow beard? No. Green eye? No. Sharp teeth? No. Stink Wurzler. Oh, more names, more names. Tuckle a wackle wiggy. Oh, no. Well, by the end of it, the Queen was saying such ridiculous names, they didn't even make sense. She was just saying the first thing that came into her head. And the Goblin was very happy. Oh, he was laughing all the way down the hall. <laughs> Haven't got my name. You could hear him cry. And then, the Queen was worried, for now this was the last day. Oh, what am I going to do? Servants, you have an hour. Go and find all the names you can again and again. I want you to find something different. Off you go. And off they went. As luck would have it, one of the servants did see something strange that night and he rushed back to tell the Queen. Excuse, 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 excuse me, you're, uh, excuse me, Your Majesty. Uh, I've just, uh, I was walking around the palace ground, you know, where the foxes and the hares do play and uh, I did, uh, I did see a little fire and a small thing, like a hobgoblin, I suppose, dancing round it. <laughs> it was saying a strange rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Merrily this brew I make, today I brew, tomorrow bake. Never does the lady know that I'm not really her Romeo. <laughs> For I do not, she cannot guess, my name is Rumpelstiltskin, she's in a mess. <laughs> as soon as the Queen heard the servant's words, a big smile came on her face. For she knew she had him, and she was able to keep her baby. She couldn't wait for the next day. And she hardly slept. But the next morning did come, as they always do. And she was there on her throne, waiting for his arrival. My queen, <laughs> it's the last day. Your child is nearly mine. 
Can you guess my name? <laughs> go on, have a go. Ooh, I wonder. I'll stay a bit longer if you like today. <laughs> Bandy legs? No! Jeremy? No! Kyle? No, 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 no! Rumpled stilt skin? Who? Who told you? Who told you my name? Who told you my name? <laughs> Now the little man got angrier and angrier and he started to stamp his feet harder and harder. So hard, in fact, he made a ginormous hole in the floor which he fell through. And he was never seen again. And the queen and the king, they lived happily enough. And the princess, she became very wise. And when it was her turn to rule, she ruled the country fairly and was very, very kind. And as for the miller, he never told a lie again. <laughs>